Today we're going to take a look at adding a new object in Sharewell. There's three different types of objects in Sharewell Service Management. There are major objects, supporting objects, and lookup tables. Now the major objects are the ones that you usually will see in the new menu. So something like the incident, the problem, the change request, the um, customer record, configuration item records. Whenever we see something in the new menu, those are major objects. I'm going to drill down here for a second into one of these incidents because the major objects are usually located across the top of the record as well, or the banner area. So when I'm in an incident, this area here is the major object itself. The second type of object is a supporting object. Those are usually down in the arrangements area or usually exist as tabs. Supporting objects live to support a major. They cannot stand by themselves. You would never have a journal that wasn't attached to something else. You would never have a task that wasn't attached to something else. You would never have a survey that wasn't attached to something else. So the major objects are usually the parents and the supporting objects are usually the children and they live to be attached to or to support a major. Now you can have a major linked to a major. In this case we've got an incident and we have a change request or change requests linked to an incident. We can also have a problem linked to an incident. Now change request and problem are both major but they act as children in this case to the incident. Now the third type of object in Sharewell is a lookup. And those lookups live to supply data. So if we go up to Tools Table Management, all the objects listed here, those are lookup tables. And those lookups usually live to provide data to dropdowns. So if I go back to my incident here, and let's find an open one. If I click on something like the call source dropdown or the category dropdown, that's lookup data. So that's a lookup table that's providing data to a dropdown. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the admin tool so you can see where we can add those objects. So I've opened a new blueprint in the admin tool and you'll see our object types, major, supporting, lookup. Now you see another radio button here called group. So what groups are, those are a set of business objects that share common fields. So if I click on groups here, you'll see that I have customer. Now I've got customer internal, but maybe I've got customer external, or maybe I have employee, or vendor, or student, or faculty. So the advantage of the group object is you have a leader that acts as the root, in this case customer, but he can then share fields among his child records. So every customer is going to have a first name. Every customer is going to have a last name. Every customer is going to have a full name. Every customer most likely will have an email address. So instead of creating those four fields multiple times, we only have to create those four fields once, and they can then be shared across all the members of that group. Now I'm going to go back here to Major and just show you how easy it is to create a brand new object. So I've highlighted Major. I can click on New Object. And when I do that, you'll see over on the right, I have a few new choices, one of which is new business object. Now I can create an external object as well, which could be linked out to another table in SQL in another database somewhere. But for today's purposes, I'm just going to click new business object. When I do that, I get my new business object screen and I can name that. So I'm just going to call this notification. When I do that, you'll notice that Sharewell gives the object a plural. And if I had spaces here, like let's say I call this notification OBJ, you'll see that he takes out the spaces for the internal name because Sharewell knows that SQL does not like spaces. Now I could have put an underscore here, and it would leave that underscore for me because SQL does allow underscores. But in this case, I'm just going to get rid of that last data and just call this table notification. Now by default track creation, track modified, track owner, and track team owner are all checked. If I leave those checked and I click OK to create this object, he's going to create a few fields for me automatically. Now by default every single object, 
every single thing in ShareWell has a REC ID, a random 42-digit ID that's created basically with the new ID parameter from SQL. If I leave the track creation checked, ShareWell is also going to create me a created date time field, a created by field, and a created ID field. If I leave track modified checked, he's also going to create me a last modified date, a last mod ID, and a last mod by field. Same if I leave ownership and team owner, it's going to create me a created, uh, or sorry, owned by field, owned by ID, owned by team, and owned by team ID fields. So if I don't want those fields, or if it doesn't make sense to have that type of tracking turned on for this particular object type, I could uncheck any of those. I can also have this object show up on the new menu. If I don't check that, when I publish this, this particular object called notification will not be in that new drop-down. Same with searching. If I uncheck show in search manager, if I go to file search or do search over here, he will not show in that list. I won't see notifications anywhere there. So if you want this object to show on the new menu and in the search manager, I have to put a check on both those. Also one steps. If I want to build one steps against this object, I have to have this checked. Otherwise, he will not show in the one step manager. If I want to build expressions against this object, I have to put a check here. Otherwise, he will not show up in the expressions manager. I'll click OK. And there's my new object. So he gave me the rec ID and he gave me those tracking fields automatically. Now I can start adding my fields. So I'm going to type in notification ID. Maybe I have a status field. Maybe I have a subject line. And then maybe I have a comment or description field. I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger. I'm going to make him a maximum. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about the um, field types today. I just wanted to show how to create the object. So I'm going to save my work. Save early, save often. If I try to publish this now, I'm going to get an error because I don't have a form and I don't have a grid. Every object in ShareWell has to have the object itself, which is usually represented by the little Rubik's Cube here. Has to have a form, has to have a grid. Now with major objects, you see two more icons. You see a relationships icon, and you see a form arrangement. That's the area with the tabs along the bottom. You do not have to have those. So I could create the form, create the grid, publish this, without actually creating any relationships to other objects or without having a form arrangement. It will allow that. I could come back and do those later. Let me go ahead and create a new form. I'm going to click on the Edit Form, and I'm going to use my Form Wizard. Form, Form Wizard. I'm partial to the orange theme. I will click OK, and when I do that, ShareWell is going to give me a little banner across the top, and it's going to grab the fields that I created and put those on the form kind of in the order he thinks is logical. Now, of course, I can go back and move things around and change them whenever I want later, but at least I have a basic placeholder for that form. Same with the grid. I'm going to click on my grid icon. I'm going to use the grid wizard. And he's going to take my fields in the form or the order he thinks is logical and throw them into that grid for me. So I can save my work, and then I'm going to go ahead and publish. Now, I can do File, Scan to check my work to make sure I haven't missed anything. But if I do File Publish, you have the option to let it scan also right before it does the publish. I usually like to scan first just to make sure before I do any further work on this guy. And here we go. So he doesn't have a public ID. Okay. So I'm going to click on Go to Error. So with every major object, you actually have to have a public ID. So I'm going to click on Use Public, and I could pick one of the existing fields that I already have, like Notification ID, or I could create a new one. In this case, I'm going to pick Notification ID. And ShareWell knows that he should create an index on a public ID for you. So I'm going to say yes to that. 
Now I probably would go ahead and put a counter on this like you have with the incident. So when you click on File New, it gives you the next available incident ID or problem ID or change ID. So I would create a notification ID counter and make that a calculation on this field. I'm going to click OK here, save this, and I'm going to scan it again just to make sure that should be the only error that I would have gotten. And then once I'm confident that everything is good, I'll go ahead and publish this. Scan successful, no errors found, file, publish. So here's my chance to scan for errors. So it's going to save my blueprint again. It's going to create me a rollback or the cover your butt file so that if there was something that I wanted to get rid of, I could always open that rollback, publish that rollback, and I'm back to vanilla. I'm back to where I was before I even tried to publish this blueprint. Now if I want this object to also show in my search menu, there's one more step I have to do. I'm going to go back in and edit the business object, go up to biz op properties at the top, then over on the left I have a search results lookup. So I have to make sure that I've turned on full text search and I have to show in the quick search menu. So that'll make him show up in the search in my task pane on the left. If those two are not checked, and you publish your blueprint, that object will still show in the new because you checked show in the new menu, but it won't show in the quick search. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and publish. And I shouldn't get any errors this time. And since I had the client tool open already, the end users are not going to see these changes. What they'll need to do is go file, log out, log back into Sharewell, or I'll show you in a second here when this is complete. If I go to my client tool and go up to help, reload definitions, that will pull down the latest definitions from the application server so they actually don't have to log out. Now if I go to the new menu, there's my notification, and if I go to my search menu, quick search, there's my notification. So they don't actually have to log out. You can publish with them in the system. Of course, that's not the best practice. You should be doing this during your maintenance window or your change window and have submitted this change as an RFC. But if they did have to be in the system, if this was kind of an emergency thing, you had to push something out, they could be in the system and go to help reload definitions to see your latest changes. So that's the easy way or a quick way to So that's adding a new object in Sharewell Service Management.